hello everyone uh, if you're uh, good day good night good morning and have a nice uh, day to you our topic for this uh, time is voices from the grave the dangers of spirituality as uh, normal I would like to remind you that the reason I'm doing this uh, doctrinal studies is because I read in Matthew that Jesus says that those who don't understand in the parable of the uh, planter of the seeds that those who don't understand the scriptures or those who don't understand the doctrines will be taken away by the enemy so I wanted to study the doctrines by myself and if you are watching and you benefit also then that will be an added, added benefit so let us pray as we start our father in heaven be merciful to us forgive us from all our sins and our stupidity be, uh, give us wisdom and understanding to understand your word please bless those who are listening and watching especially me as i uh, study with my friends. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, <clears throat> our topic is about voices beyond the grave. This is about the dangers of spiritualism. You know, the idea of talking the dead seems to fascinate many today. Many movies, novels, and even children's literature are talking about uh, talking to the dead and there are many books about mediums and activities and their activities and some of them are bestsellers even and they are the one they are curious about talking with another world it is very captivating to the imagination but you know do you know that psychics and mediums do you know, are you sure that they are really talking to the dead huh? how do we know if it is true can the dead really talk to us can their bodies be seen again or voices even the smell and acts and the voice that's a very good question and since we know that the bible is authoritative in everything including our salvation and our doctrine and so that we will not be deceived by the enemy we are going to look into the bible because if we don't understand death we don't understand life we don't understand salvation then our eternal salvation may be at stake so we have to have solid answers from the bible because there is nothing more reliable than answers from god's word if you agree with that just come with me and let's see what the bible says the bible clearly condemns spiritualism and attempts to communicate with the dead in leviticus 19 31 it says give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits do not seek after them to be defiled by them i am the lord your god so do not talk to mediums to uh alburario and people who claim to talk to the dead in deuteronomy 18 10 to 12 it is more emphasized when the bible means something they write it down when it's written twice it is emphasis that means it is that important there shall not be found among you a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits that was uh, given to them before they came to canaan or a wizard or a necromancer for all that these things are an abomination all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Okay. Exodus 22, 18 also says, You shall not permit a sorceress or witch to live. 
Oh, because there is a tendency for people to want to consult which you shall not allow a witch to live according to Exodus 22:18. Who is saying these things? The Lord. First Corinthians uh, Chronicles 10:13. So what happened to Paul as uh, to Saul, sorry, who tried to speak to the dead? He died. So Saul died for his unfaithfulness which he had committed. Because he knew the truth, he was the king, but he still did what God specifically said many times through Moses that they should not do. And also because he consulted a medium for guidance. So that's what happened to King Saul. But why does God don't, uh, doesn't want us to talk to the dead? Huh? Doesn't God understand that we need uh, comfort and guidance? Yes, God wants to comfort us. And He even sees all our problems. He knows the number of our hair. Not a sparrow will fall without His knowing. And He is touched by our grief. In fact, in John 11.35, it says, Jesus wept. Why? Because his friend Lazarus died and he wants, therefore, he wants to comfort Lazarus' sisters and also the friends and also God wants to, Jesus wants to comfort us when we are, uh, some, our family members die. But why does Jesus, God, don't want us to communicate with the friends or depart those who died? It is because it's not those, it's not our friends who died. Yeah, we will learn later. So it says in Revelation 1 even if you die, we should not be afraid. Even if our friends die, it says here, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am live, I, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. So God does not only want us to be reunited with our family. God actually can resurrect them and resurrect us also someday. So don't consult these mediums, eh? these uh, people who claim to talk to the dead. It's not true. We should trust in Jesus Christ because he lived, he died, and he resurrected himself. Therefore, he can resurrect us. Let us be loyal to the person who can resurrect us and who can resurrect our loved ones. Okay, it says here, John 10.10, 10, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly so god wants us to give, to have life not only this life also eternal life and more so also our friends our beloved other of our family members who have gone to the grave already and jesus told martha when lazarus passed away in john 11 25 i am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me though he may die he shall live wow so if we believe in jesus christ even if we die we are going to live later that is an amazing promise i don't know what else are you thinking about but life is worth every decision especially eternal life he who believes in me though he may die he shall live because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. So, uh, nobody knows how <laughs> to invent life except God. Therefore, in John 1, 1 to 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and this capital W. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made so if you have a problem with life consult the creator jesus christ because he is the one who made us he is the one who can resurrect us let us trust jesus christ and be loyal to him for uh, colossians 1 16 says for by him all things were created and all things were created through him and for him wow i surrender my choices to my creator because he can resurrect me there is nobody else who can resurrect us when we die if we die job 7 9 and 10 as the cloud disappears and vanishes away so he who goes down to the grave does not come up what happens to people who die where are they they are in the cemetery if you put them in the cemetery they are still there those who go into the grave they do not come up according to job 7 9 and 10 so they do not come up to communicate with us they are there according to the bible they are they do not come up from the grave job 7 continues he shall never return to his house if you, your grandfather died and then you saw him in his in your house it's not your grandfather my friend you will know who is that you are seeing but it's not your grandfather he shall never return to his house nor shall his place know him anymore so if you your mother or your grandfather or your grandmother died and then you suddenly see him in church or outside your house or sitting that's not uh, your grandfather i will we will know from the bible who that those are okay now ecclesiastes 9 5 for the living know that they will die but the dead know nothing wow the living know we all know we are going to die die but those who died they don't know anything they are just dead okay that is what the bible teaches and we cannot communicate with those who don't know anything revelation 16 is uh, answering our question if the dead is not are not conscious who are those who are speaking to the living huh? revelation 16 13 and 14 explains and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon satan out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets for they are spirits of demons or fallen angels performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of god almighty so what are they doing they are performing signs so those spirits who pretend to be your grandfather and your grandmother and your dad and your uncle and your beloved ones they are unclean spirits deceiving many people so that you will be deceived and be with them in the battle of the great day of god almighty deceiving the whole world where are they from why are there bad spirits and good spirits in revelation 12 7 to 9 it the bible further explains where the demons come from and what is their purpose now hmm? this is the origin and war broke out in heaven michael that is god and his angels fought with the dragon who is the dragon satan and the dragon and his angel fought but they did not prevail of course how can you prevail <laughs> if you fight god the definition of god you can of course nobody can fight god and prevail even if you are a big big angel but they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer so that the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and satan who deceives the whole world satan deceived one third of the angels and he wants to deceive the whole world when jesus said you shall surely die the serpent said you shall not surely die 
He was cast to earth and his angels were cast out with him. And that's the purpose of all of the evil angels to deceive us that those that death doesn't happen. When we die, that we don't really die. That is the first lie told to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God said, you, when, if you eat of this prohibited fruit, you shall surely die. But the serpent said, you shall not surely die die okay so let us not be deceived let us know the truth and hold on to the truth and believe jesus christ therefore that is the reason my friends that the bible is strictly telling us not to talk or to communicate with the dead or even those who claim to communicate with the dead because those are evil spirits deceiving the whole world okay so their purpose is not to bring comfort but to turn us away from jesus because jesus says don't but they said you do therefore if we follow them then we don't believe jesus but we believe their deception why do they want to deceive us because they want company they would just that's sin you want company you don't want to be alone committing sin therefore communication with the dead or the mediums or spiritualism is not a light thing because god jesus says do not do it and you cannot uh, talk with the evil spirits and win because they are big and powerful but god is more powerful than them if we don't understand this teaching we might be vulnerable and at risk of a terribly attractive deception so god is more powerful when god says don't do it we should obey when god tells the evil spirits to go away they have to run away because they are afraid of god our god is more powerful than those evil spirits don't worry don't worry there are more good angels there are more good worlds and god created all of them i mean how can you uh, defeat god huh? god just says and it happens so satan's deceptive power is so great that he can impersonate others they are pretending he even has the ability to be to appear like a good angel it says in second corinthians eleven fourteen, and no wonder for satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light oh satan can appear like anything but do not believe satan believe the bible and god so uh, this uh, spiritualist can pretend to look like your loved ones who talks who smells and acts like the people who already did, uh, died but it is not true it is satan who is doing satan and his angels who are doing all of this foolishness deception <clears throat> so the those uh, verses are telling us that we could uh, there is a uh, possible deception in fact there is a uh, bigger deception satan will try to impersonate even jesus christ yeah not only your dead loved ones but even jesus christ satan will try to deceive and pretend that is also the second coming if you don't know how the second coming will happen you might be deceived by satan's pretense or deception about the second coming take heed matthew 24 4 and 5 that no one deceives you for many will come in my name saying i am the christ if you see somebody say i am the christ don't believe unless it fits with the characteristics in the bible which we will learn later and will deceive many who don't know because they don't have time to listen to lectures like this but you are fortunate you have attention span and interest to listen to god's word so there is a risk then if anyone says to you look here and here is the christ or there do not believe it for false christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs if you see signs don't believe you have to look into the bible 
because Jesus himself prophesied that in the last days, the false prophet can also make signs. How do they make signs? Satan helps them. The evil angels help them with their powers. They will be able to make signs and wonders. Therefore, signs and wonders are not reliable in the last days. Because the enemy, Jesus actually, the Bible predicts they will use those signs and wonders. What is our reliable, reliable source? It is the Bible. If they are teaching what is in the Bible, not adding, not subtracting, then it is believable. They make signs to deceive, even if possible, the very elect. See, I have told you beforehand. That's in Matthew 24, 23 to 25. <clears throat> But despite many warnings, many people still believe and they try to, I don't know, maybe it is emotional thing. Yeah? But we should not do, do that. The Bible clearly tells us that these miraculous impersonations are deceptions of Satan. So, <coughs> excuse me, what, is, uh, what about near-death experiences? You see in YouTube and Facebook, people claiming that they say, I died the 20 minutes clinically dead, but I resurrected, they resurrected. But those are results, so this, these are not death, these are called near-death experiences. Those are results when you have medications and oxygen deprivation, those uh, things happen to your mind and you uh, dream of things that are not true. So, our safety... It's not their experiences, but God's word. Because even, what if you believe them? Can they resurrect you when you die? No. When Jesus, if you believe Jesus, Jesus can resurrect us when we die. Because he can resurrect himself when you die. Those people who claim to have these things, they cannot resurrect if they die. Jesus Christ only is the only one who deserves our loyalty. How about uh, other religions? who are not Christians. There are people who believe in reincarnation, that when you die, you will be, uh, reincarnate into another creature. How come nobody, t I have never met anybody who says, I was a monkey before, but I was a good monkey, I became a human. Or a cow, <laughs> who says, uh, of course, they cannot talk. Okay. So those are inventions of uh, the enemy to deceive. The other people who are that who don't know the Bible, so those reincarnation uh, that's not in the Bible. The Bible says the living know that they will die, and the dead know not anything. They not they do not come out of the grave. What about Hinduism and Buddhism teaching the goal of nir Nirvana? Huh? That when you die, something else will happen to you. No, 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 no. The Bible says when we die, we go to the grave and we resurrect when Jesus Christ calls us. Okay? The Bible says when we die, there is, uh, there is no more knowledge. But Buddhism and Hinduism, they are teaching Tao that when you die, there is nirva, a peaceful state. Nothingness, no personality, no intelligence, no memory. No personality. Ah, I don't know. There is, the enemy can invent all sorts of things. But it is the Bible and God's word that is reliable. <clears throat> what is the difference between those uh, other religions and what the Bible tells us? Of course, the Bible has the best plan and the best proposal and the best proof that it can happen. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, I have come that they may have life and that they may have life more abundantly when jesus came he came to give people to uh, get sickness out of people to make people well not only that he came so that we might have eternal life that is more abundantly not only this temporal life but the future eternal life that is what jesus wants us to have it's better than Reincarnation, it's better than nirvana. It's actual real life and with Jesus Christ and living forever. No limit. Wow. <clears throat> Paul says, 
he was talking about eternity. What is eternity? What is going to happen in the eternal life? Of course, we don't know. We don't know exactly. In 1 Corinthians 13, 12, Paul says, For we now, for now, we see in a mirror dimly. Okay, we cannot see clearly. But later, we will see face to face. Even if we see now, we cannot understand. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. But thankfully, God gave the prophets a little introduction of what is going to happen in the new heaven and a new earth to get us excited a little bit, yeah? to, have a, to give us hope. Because this, this time there is so much evil, we have to look also at the good uh, prophecy at the positive things God wants to give us. Okay, let's go there. Revelation 21, 1 to 4. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first, first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Wow! God is going to dwell with us. We can ask God questions. We can consult him every day. We can listen to his sermons. It's, this, is, this is not Moses or Ezekiel or Isaiah preaching or John. This is God himself, the Holy Spirit, God the Father. That is very exciting. We can just forget all our problems and just look at this promise and we will be happy all our lives and prepare other people also to, to join here. God himself will be with them and be their God and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Don't worry if you have sadness now crying, God will wipe away all those things by replacing everything that you have lost with something infinitely better. There shall be no more death. Wow. Do you, don't worry about COVID. In heaven and in new earth, no more death. So even if we die now of our sickness, of our age, the previous verse says, if we believe in Jesus, we will be resurrected. <clears throat> and when we will be resurrected, there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain and the former things have passed away. We will forget all our problems, all our pains, all our persecutions, all our money, all our whatever. But everything will be very nice in heaven. Do you want to go to heaven? I don't know who doesn't want to go to heaven. But it says in 1 Peter 1 verse 3 and 4, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy, God is really merciful, despite of all our foolishness, he wants us to go to heaven and forgive us our, from our sins. I don't know how merciful God is. We will research about that whole eternity, why he loves us even if we are foolish before. God begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because Jesus Christ resurrected, we have hope that we will be resurrected also and be in heaven with Jesus Christ. What are we going to do there? To an inheritance, incorruptible. We will not rot there and undefiled and does not fade away. These days, our hair fades, our eyesight fades, our look fades, but in heaven, they will not fade. Reserved in heaven for you. First Peter 3, uh, 1, 3, and 4. <clears throat> Therefore, when we are born again, we can have eternal life. Okay? 1 John 5, 11, and 12. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life in his 
Son. Are you thankful that God is giving you eternal life, my friend? He who has the Son has life. So how can we have Jesus? That is the question. How can we have Jesus? You read that. He who has the Son has life. Okay. <laughs> Never mind about everything in this life. As long as we have Jesus, we have eternal life. I will tell you in the last slide how you can have Jesus in your life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. That's why Jesus Christ is the pearl of great price. Forget everything, just focus on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one we have to have in our life. He who has the Son of life, he who has the Son, has life. He who does not have the Son, does not have life. 1 John 5, 11 and 12. How can we be sure? <clears throat> How do we know that eternal life is ours? Listen, in 1 John 5, 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So, we have to believe. To believe. <laughs> to have Jesus Christ is to have eternal life. And how do we know? Because we read it. Yeah? I have written to you, who believe in the name of the Son, that you may know that you have eternal life. How do we know? Because the Bible says so. Okay? If we believe the Bible, because the Bible is accurate, then the Bible is also true in this matter. And this is the solution. How can we have Jesus? How can we believe in Jesus? Actually, Jesus wants us to be, to be, Jesus wants to give himself to us. Jesus wants to enter our hearts and our lives. Jesus wants us to believe him. He is knocking at the door of our hearts. In Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him. Diba? We need Jesus Christ to be with us. He who has the Son has life. Jesus wants to come into our life and he is knocking. I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Yes, my friends, if you want to have Jesus Christ, accept him into your heart. He is knocking. He wants to enter your heart. He wants you to believe in him. So read the Bible and pray and ask for the guidance of the Holy Spirit and you will have life. Not only this life, but life eternal. Let us pray, my friends. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the Bible that teaches us the difference between truth and error. We thank you that you are more powerful than the enemy. You have more angels and you have better plans. We only ask that you forgive us from all our foolishness before and that you give us wisdom and understanding to choose you, to choose life, to choose Jesus instead of Satan and to also give us wisdom and understanding to help others choose you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.